So, during the last 50 years, uh, there have been real important developments uh, in nanotechnology, where we are now able to control matter uh, at the nanoscale. So, there are three major components of this revolution. One is the ability to design nano, so that we can create new multifunctional elements out of uh, atoms, different atoms. The second is that you can actually make them and there are two major approaches of making nanomaterials which is one is called top down which is you cut bulk material and get down to the nanoscale and the other is through what is known as self assembly where you can assemble different materials. Third element of this is the revolution in imaging that is microscopy so that you are now able to see these nano elements. What we are doing here is taking nanotechnology and then applying it to key medical challenges and in doing this we are leveraging the other major developments in the last 50 years which is in molecular biology. So, what, what has happened since the discovery uh, of the structure of DNA by Watson and Crick is that we now ascribe to disease molecular origins. So, it is not you know vague ideas like the good stuff left and the bad stuff came into the body, but now for any disease is now identified by molecular origin. So, for instance, cancer is associated with genetic mutations. Even neurological diseases have genetic or epigenetic origins. So, what we are doing in nanomedicine is putting these two different developments, one in nanotechnology and in the other in the molecular basis of disease to try to address key challenges in human health. And the key challenges in modern medicine today are primarily twofold. One is uh, you want to catch the disease very early, so early diagnosis is important. So, today we are now trying to catch disease not at, uh, today we are only able to catch disease cancer let us say at anatomical sizes for the tumor like millimeter sizes, which corresponds to about a billion cells. However, what we want to do is improve our sensitivity by a million times, so that you can detect cancer at a thousand cells. You can only do this with nanotechnology. The other part is once you have identified the disease, let us say you have a tumor in the breast or prostate, you know what happens now is you administer the drugs, they go everywhere, they go to the head and the hair falls off. And in fact, if you think about it, when you say cancer chemotherapy, you immediately think of a bald person. They are totally unrelated. They should not happen. With nanotechnology, we can guide the drugs to the disease site. Now, in order to achieve it, you have to bring together a whole range of uh, expertise uh, and this includes physics, chemistry, engineering, biology, medicine. All of that has to be put together in a very interdisciplinary approach and that is what we are doing here in several specific ways. So, we are creating uh, nano platforms which what they will do is they, they incorporate the drug let us say doxorubicin for um, cancer treatment, but they also will have a targeting moiety which will say an antibody which will then go and home in on the uh, disease site on the tumor rather than going everywhere else. This way now not only that, but you can also design these to have multifunctionality. So, they may take for they may incorporate for instance imaging agents, so that then you can go and visualize where the tumor is and then you can monitor 
what is happening to the, to the tumor as the drug is released from the nanoparticles and attacks the cancer cells. There are various strategies now for achieving the, um, the biological outcome you want. You try to exploit several pathways or biologic, physiological mechanisms. Uh, for instance, you may want to use apoptosis to kill cells. You may want to use gene silencing. You want to exploit the fact that uh, cells like to take up nanoparticles through a process known as endocytosis. You may want to target specific subcellular organisms like mitochondria or the nucleus or the ribosome, whichever that is the most appropriate to the particular uh, disease you're trying to cure. And there is actually no uh, limitation on what the disease is. Uh, there is a whole range of possibilities here. Cancer, of course, is a major uh, problem uh, and, and one of the leading causes of uh, death, uh, in the, particularly in the developed world as, as well as uh, everywhere. And uh, there are many strategies and many groups that are working on this. The Nanomedicine Center that I direct at Northeastern has developed several approaches to this challenge of drug delivery. We are using both strategies for coming outside in, that is through systemic administration and making nanoparticles that are targeted to the disease. But we're also doing chemotherapy sometimes from the inside out where we implant uh, the uh, drugs in a depot, which then releases uh, slowly. And the advantage of this slow release is that it can also be synchronized with radiation therapy. So typically nowadays, you know, therapies are all multimodal, that is, are combinatorial. And you have more than one modality that is used. So we are trying to uh, create platforms that will uh, lead to synergistic interactions which will be positive and will have greater impact than just one of them alone. So these are some of the approaches that are being used by the Northeastern lab uh, and the center that I direct. So these are not easy challenges to address. There are many potential barriers to success. And for instance, you have to ensure that whatever mechanism that you are using uh, does not also attack healthy cells, that it only uh, targets uh, the, uh, the diseased cells. So this diff selectivity is not 100%. So we have to improve the uh, selectivity uh, to greater and greater degree. We also have to uh, ensure that the nanoparticles don't go into disease site, into sites where they're not supposed to go. Uh, so the targeting mechanism has to be very uh, uh, efficient uh, and uh, precise. This is often one of the biggest challenges uh, and there are various approaches that are and mechanisms that are used uh, depending on the particular uh, disease that we are uh, targeting. What we're doing now is actually entirely new in the history of uh, human biology. We are now able to address biological mechanisms at the nanoscale. And so in fact, there is a new uh, discipline of nanobiology that is emerging because there are new processes that are happening. It's not just simple genetics, let's say, and it's not just genetic mutations. You have other 
uh, aspects. You know, you have epigenetics, you have metabolomics. Uh, and so these processes are very complex. But now we are beginning to get an increased understanding of these processes uh, through the use of technologies in nanomedicine uh, as well as uh, other uh, biological uh, techniques.